Welcome back to Community Update. I am your host, Promise Okoy. Online short-term rental STR platforms such as Airbnb have grown spectacularly in Canada and around the world. Some believe that the surge in popularity of STR platforms has also led to substantial opposition because of a decrease in housing affordability, unfair competition and illegal hotelization. To help us throw some light into how this development has impacted the housing market is Kevin Ndoro. Kevin is a senior analyst economist with the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC. He is part of a team of housing economists and researchers who strive to improve their understanding of housing market dynamics and how they impact affordability. Kevin joined us today to provide economic insights to better understand, solve, and strengthen current and future challenges in the housing system. It's good to see you in the studio, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Promise. Thanks for having me. I will always say thank you because getting you down here has been a tough call. Really? I'm, I'm a busy guy. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> right. In the intro, um, of course, you've seen a, a bit of a uh, few things there that have been concerning around the yeah. housing um, uh, crisis we have here in Nova Scotia. And this has continued to be uh, a front burner issue here in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what's really going on with the housing situation here? Well, we, we, we do have a housing crisis. Um, our population has been growing, growing really fast. And in the case of uh, Nova Scotia, we have the fastest growing population in the country after Prince Edward Island. Um, in, when you compare Halifax to the bigger cities, Halifax is the fastest growing CMA in, um, in Canada right now. Just this past year, our population has grown by 2.9%. So lots of people are moving here, but we just don't have enough housing for everybody. And so a lot of people will be wondering, uh, the government is saying this, and of course it's on headlines, news and all of that. What do you think the government is doing at this point to uh, address this issue? Well, I mean, different governments are doing different things. I, I can't speak so much about what they are doing. I know what they are doing, mm -hmm. but I think I can speak to what CMHC is doing. Uh, we started off with the National Housing Strategy, which was a program um, to try and increase supply in all of Canada and to ensure that uh, everybody in Canada has a home that they can afford uh, that meets their needs. So we have different programs which target uh, the full spectrum uh, of housing and part particularly in rental housing, because that's where uh, the greatest need is. So we have lots of money to try and increase supply. And as you also may be aware, aware that uh, inflation is currently here, when well, we can't feel it anyway. We can't pretend that there's no inflation going on currently in the economy here. Um, one would be wondering, what is the impact level? Do you have any sense of idea of how that impact the housing um, uh, situation? Well, inflation has really kind of taken us back with the work that we're trying to do at CMHC, which is to improve uh, mm. affordability and also increase supply. Because what essentially inflation has done is uh, it reduces people's purchasing power. Right. So because the prices of everything uh, is going up, the money that's left over for people to put uh, towards housing or towards rental is not a lot. Um, inflation is going a lot faster than uh, people's incomes are. So in Halifax, for example, in the past year, we've seen 5% growth in wages, but inflation overall uh, hit a peak at 9%. Uh, but when you look at other different items like gas and everything, those like are much higher. So inflation definitely is impacting people's ability to have affordable housing. Right, so again, COVID has come in and has dealt a big blow on, us, um, on all sectors of the economy. Um, would you say the housing is not affordable given the COVID situation that we find ourselves, and it's not gone yet, by the way. Uh, what what do you take on that? Really? Yeah, so the pandemic restrictions really uh, affected housing um, as you as you probably know like prices of housing in Halifax in Nova Scotia went through the roof like we had a record year of sales in 2021 we had record prices like I think prices peaked in 
Nova Scotia and Halifax in April of 2022 in Nova Scotia, the average house was like 600,000. Uh, in Nova Scotia, it was about 400,000 and, and, and so forth. And just when you compare that to before the pandemic, yeah. where the average house in Halifax was about 300,000, right? So it's a big, big increase uh, in house prices. And I think Nova Scotia, Halifax is a good place to live. So right. with the pandemic and everything, we saw a lot of people um, appreciating the quality of life we have here. And so we had lots of uh, interprovincial migration, people moving from Ontario, BC, right. and so forth, where, as you know, housing there is even uh, less affordable than it is uh, in Halifax. So definitely COVID has had an impact, but also with that, has come inflation right. because there was a lot of uh, stimulus money that was put into the economy to try and uh, dampen the effects uh, of the restriction and stuff. Right. So with that, now we had too much money chasing too few goods mm -hmm. because things were shut down, supply was down and everything. So with that, that's what comes inflation. So now we're in a different period mm -hmm. where the Bank of Canada now has to control inflation and right. interest rates are going up, right. which only makes it even more challenging. And um, some people having you on set will be, you know, they'll be looking forward to getting such information such as uh, where is the hottest place when it comes to housing here in Halifax. Uh, what would you say to this class of people who want to know the hottest place and where you can actually get affordable housing here? Well, it depends uh, because people have um, different needs, I guess, when it comes to housing. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, like I said, affordability is a big issue. So there are certain sub markets in Halifax where prices are still, I would say, in the 400,000 below 500,000. Right. And those are places where we are seeing sales are still fairly strong, like mind you, sales have gone down uh, because of interest rates and everything. All sub-markets are seeing lower sales than previous years and stuff like that. But where they have not dropped the most are areas like Dartmouth, Sackville, Eastern Passage, uh, even East Hans, Enfield and so forth. Those are places where are um, still affordable and prices haven't gone down as much. Take into consideration the fact that we have an influx of immigrants, yeah. particularly the African uh, descent ones. Yeah. Where will you be directing them to? Well, I mean, it, if you're looking for something affordable, right. uh, something, like I said, below 500,000, then you're looking at places like Dartmouth, mm -hmm. Sackville, uh, and so forth. But there's also value. Some people, when they're looking at buying a house, they're looking at value. And one of the things that maybe in the real estate market you can use to measure value is the price per square foot, right? And areas like Enfield and Four River, Four River is like, uh, it's more expensive, but when you look at the price per square foot, people seem to be finding more value there, even places like uh, Hammond's Plains Hammond's Plain. uh, and stuff, people seem to find more value there because the price per square foot uh, is a little bit lower than you would say, um, see maybe in Peninsula Halifax or something like that. How much do you think houses go for around those areas? Well, uh, roughly, like, like I said, like in, in Dartmouth, you're looking at four, four hundred and eighty average price. Uh, same with Sackville and so forth. Like when actually Four River has had uh, this year um, the highest average price at around seven hundred thousand. And so same with Hammond's Plains. Okay, uh, but then. There you come to downtown Halifax, you look in the average price there has been around 600,000 and so forth. All right. So as we wrap up, I'll ask one question, but I'll ask another one much yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. So this one has to do with those individuals who have turned their properties to an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned at the beginning of uh, this uh, interview, yeah. there are quite a lot of things going on around there. And recently, most recently, the provincial uh, government uh, made a proclamation um, of um, making sure that those who have Airbnb platforms or who are in this business get registered or register their properties. Mm -hmm. What impact do you think it has on those who want to make the extra income from their property? Unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, I don't think it will make a big impact because the mistake that people make mm -hmm. is 
assume that Airbnb and rental is a one for one relationship in the sense that like if a unit is moved from Airbnb, it automatically goes into rental. But it doesn't always work like that. Right. Because the people who are Airbnb probably would have chosen to sell the house. Right. Uh, so it could also go into the resale market. So mm -hmm. maybe if we put in uh, policies in place that makes it harder or more challenging for people to put them on Airbnb, they might as well just choose to uh, to sell the house so it doesn't go into the rental market yeah. as what people would think would happen. And also, I think um, Airbnb becomes a scapegoat and it actually takes away from other issues uh, with regards to supply because there are some areas when you look at the data, uh, there are some areas where they don't have a lot of Airbnbs, right. but they have really low rental vacancy rates there's not enough supply, right? So there are so many issues uh, with regards to rental supply that I think it's a bit myopic to only focus on Airbnb. And lastly, uh, do you think there's hope for those who are seemingly uh, hopeless in this current situation uh, that this will go away? What do you think people should uh, uh, put their faith on, on the government or just wait and see this bad cloud walk away? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, like just like the economy, we have booms, uh, yeah. we, have, we have cycles of uh, up and down and so forth. And hopefully I think this, this will go away, but there has to be a considered effort from different uh, uh, levels of government and different departments when they're making policies to make sure that they vibe, right? So if it's like immigration policies, they also need to take uh, housing uh, in, into consideration More seriously. And, and, and so forth, right? Because yep. it's, it's a lot easier to get people to move to a place than it is to build a house. Like average construction times in Halifax are anywhere between, if it's for apartments, it's about two years. To build an apartment yeah but in two years you you can have about 10,000 20,000 people moving into the city yeah. so we need to try to find a balance but uh I, I think we'll get there we just need to work together and so what will be your final word housing related um, advice final word yeah I, I i think when people look at the housing situation in um in nova scotia and stuff like that they, mm. there's a temptation to want to go move elsewhere but like when you look at prices of houses in in in, in, in canada and really that's where you want to be looking everybody wants to own a house right nobody wants to rent forever because house is when is how most people get out of poverty how people create wealth right so that's why i'm focusing on housing but when you look at house prices in Nova Scotia, in Halifax, you right. compare them with the rest of the country. Yes, it's getting challenging to buy a house, but it's still the most affordable market. That's why we're seeing a lot of people moving from Ontario, a lot of people moving from BC. An average house in Ontario, uh, in Toronto is like 1.2 million. In BC, uh, Vancouver, it's about 1.3 million. And here in Halifax, we are sitting about 500,000. So um, there's hope. And yeah, people should just save, save and try to build a home here in Nova Scotia. Thank you so much. I feel that's the right place to leave it. Kevin, yeah. thank you for coming to this tour and giving us all that information. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And that was Kevin Ndoro, a senior analyst, economist with the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content like this and other interesting conversations around things happening within the black community of Nova Scotians here. Till I come your way again, I am Promise Okoye. Bye for now. <laughs>